What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're doing well. And of course, I hope you're having a fantastic week. So we're back with the trade ideas and we're going to be focusing on the trade ideas for the 21st of September 2022, just to see if there's anything on the table for us to look at and to see if we can get you closer to your goals and dreams. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Please consider subscribing. If you're coming back, welcome back. And uh, of course, if you like this video, please, please hit that like button for me. It does wonders for the channel. It helps to share and spread the message. And it shows me that you're enjoying these videos. And of course, turn on notifications so you don't miss these videos next time. So we're going to go over the market today, see what's happening, see if there's any trade ideas that we can gather for tomorrow. And uh, we're going to take a look at and we're going to take a look at a couple of trades that I have taken this week. Now, I've only taken two trades this week, and I'm sharing this one with you first. This is a trade that I took today, so that's the 20th of September, and it was a beautiful, gorgeous, magnificent one to four wrist wood ratio on gold. Now, this trade was pretty simple, guys. I mean, I'll start with a higher time frame from the 4H time frame. And uh, if we look at the structure of the market, something we do for every single time frame we look at, or every single pair, should I say, we look at, we can see that the overall sentiment has been pushing bearish. So once we're breaking this structural low here, coming back for these retests, which we spoke about last week, by the way, and we called these trades out, and we see price pushing to the downside, there's a very high chance that we continue bearish. Now, if you'll see here, we have a lower high in this market structure that failed to make the lower high, uh, beg your pardon, failed to make the lower low. But regardless, it's a significant level in the market. We expect price to come back to this level and react. And then if it's broken, we expect the market sentiment to shift and turn bullish. Now, at this stage, you can see price is holding this level, which is very interesting. And what I wanted to do is scale down to my lower time frame to start seeing what's happening. Now, remember, guys, what I'm looking for is a simple process to trade. I'm looking for a behavioral shift and I'm looking for strength and or weakness in the market. And how do we do that? We draw in our brick wall. We identify price failing to break a structural high. We look for that momentum shift in the opposite direction of the behavior previous to this brick wall. A break of a structural low here to indicate the uptrend has completely finished. By the way, we can continue going up, but from a price action, price action perspective and behavioral perspective, we're looking at this as that it's been depleted. It's over. And there's a higher chance we continue bearish. And then what I did, guys, is I scaled down to my lower time frame, which is on the five minute. And as you can see here, we have a break below the structure, bullish momentum into this major key level, depletion in anticipation of a continuation down. So I caught this momentum candle and I held it for dear life. Now, you can see here it was a pretty easy hold because now if we're expecting this to continue bearish, where am I expecting price to go? Well, if I'm entering the trade here, we have clean traffic to the downside. I'm expecting price to get back down to this low. Now, you might be saying, well, Rox, why didn't you hold it down to this low? And if you did, you would have made a one to five risk to ratio trade. Well, guys, I was happy risking my dollars and making my dollars. And that's what I set out for. And that's what I took. I'm not getting no FOMO. I'm not getting no greed. I'm not get getting into any woulda, coulda, shouldas. That was what I went for. And that's what I took out of the markets. So... A beautiful trade and that's actually put me up um four off of the week gorgeous absolutely gorgeous but my week didn't start off like this and i'm going to share with you why over here on gj you can see that i took this trade and uh yeah we actually smashed a one to three on this and we didn't take profits unfortunately but it is what it is again i was going for that one to four which is this major low and some of you might be saying well, Rox, why didn't you take profits at one to three? Guys, it's the same question that you're asking me here. Why didn't I hold this for a one to five? Well, it wasn't the target I was going for, right? Let's say now you, you said, hold this for the one to five down to the key level. Okay, I do. And then what happens? Price goes in my direction. Oh, you could have been in that trade if you held it. Okay, go back to GJ. Rox, why didn't you close this trade at one to three? Well, you just told me on gold to hold it to the key level. So that's what I was doing. I was holding it to the key level. You see, conflicting, contradictory stories that you tell yourself when you're trading. 
So I did. I'd done the same thing. I held this to where I was comfortable and I was holding this to where I was comfortable. One to three, I wasn't comfortable. I wanted it at the key level today, yesterday, on Monday, right? And anyway, price pushed down, bounced off of this intraday level, came back, pushed down. I was getting hopeful when then price reversed and took me out break even. What do you do? It is what it is. It's not the end of the world. I risk a thousand, go for four thousand. Hypothetically speaking, we don't hit it and we hit break even. I risk a thousand, make four thousand. Hypothetically, hypothetically speaking, we're laughing. Four thousand week one, four thousand week two, four thousand week three, four thousand week five, and we make sixteen grand. Hypothetically speaking, how many of you make four thousand a month or? From one trade, 4,000 a week and or 16,000 a month. Keep it simple, guys. Small risk, big reward. One or two trades a week is all you need. If you hit break even, it is what it is. If you get stopped out, it is what it is. Come back the next day, execute according to your plan. As long as you have a plan and a concept that has a proven, um, a proven, a uh, positive expectancy rate or a proven system that works, excuse me, my words muddling up there, you are going to make money. And that's what I do every single day, every single week. Simple. Identify my trades, execute. We break even some, we lose some, we make some. Okay. So that's my trades for this week. Um, let's go over the markets. We're going to start off with GU as we do. We're going to head over to the daily time frame. Now, this is the first time that I'm looking at the markets today um, because my focus was GJ and gold, so I didn't look anywhere else. And um, what I can see from GU is we're continuing to push bearish. So this is an indication of USD strength. Now, I mean, I haven't gone over the market, so I really don't know if this is true or if this is just pound weakness. But the first thing that I'm going to identify here is we are now finally breaking this area in the market, which we failed to break for some time. Two days. That's a long time, you know, as an inch day trader, that's a very long time. So now that we have the information, I want to see what's happening. We have a um, intraday um, structural high here that we have to look at on the four hourly time frame and see what's happening. Because by the looks of it, price attempted to push up and has failed. And as you can see from this information here, um, this is the information we're looking at. Now, guys, if you were trading, um, yeah, if you were trading GJ today, damn dog like you guys should have got into this trade this was super simple structure bearish cpi correction continuation level created level respected maybe you got in a little bit early maybe you got stopped out but i mean look if you use a 10 pip stop loss even smaller with gj you got a 70 pip 72 pip move there you lose three of those trades at a 10 pip stop loss or seven pip stop loss <clears throat> Uh, let's just say 10 pip stop loss, right? So you lose three of them in a row. You execute again. I mean, this is just mad. You probably wouldn't, but let's just say number sake wise. You take three trades at 10 pip stop loss. You lose three of them. So you go seven minus three. You take another trade with a 10 pip stop loss and you're back to break even. Now, if you looked at your trading in that way, would you ever view losses or con consecutive losses as being something negative? or be in the end of the world, of course you wouldn't. Then what you do is you take those three losses, you execute that trade, you get back to break even, you come back tomorrow, and the first trade you execute with a 10 pip stop loss is gonna be your best trade of the week. Where you risk 10 pips, make 70 pips, and now you're seven R up, even after you had three consecutive losses. It's not the end of the world, and it's a great way to look at your immediate trading results because I know a lot of you out there are kind of thrown off by them. And it's just like, oh, what do I do? Okay. So look, guys, we have two days of information here illustrating to us that we were failing to break the structural lows. Uh, and now we're finally breaking them. Now, we're going to break the rule that we say in terms of moving this level. Because I think the 4H is as significant as a daily. And I think if we get down to the hourly, then that's when we're not going to move it or the 30 minute. Now, I don't want to make up rules. So if you want to use this level, feel free to do so. But I think it's very important to understand that the daily have the daily has created these lows, these bottom lows here. And from a 4H perspective, if that's the only time frame you're using for your high time frame perspective, which is mainly what I use, 
then we have to move this. We really do. So it's pretty simple now that we're looking at this to figure out where we're going with GU. Um, and this level here has been significant. We've constantly had a daily reaction from this level whereby we've just been leaving wicks after wicks after wicks. Now we've got about two hours and 20 minutes before this candle closes, which is the end of um, the 20th. Then a new daily, daily candle is going to open. This could reject, right? So we're going to play on the side of caution moving into tomorrow because this is clearly an area where price is reacting to. And what we're going to want to see as part of this behavior, this bearish behavior in this USD strength is just through the Asian session, a nice break at this level and then sells anywhere from this level, anywhere. The minute you get your signals, you can look for sales from this level because it's significant. And usually a broken support term resistance is a strong level in the market to indicate that's where sellers are sitting and that's where the highest chance of price reacting from is going to be. Now, I just want to say this again before we get too far into this, that everything that I'm about to tell you today is of my own opinion. These are not facts. This does not mean that they're going to play out the way that I'm illustrating. If you're going to take these trade ideas, please make sure you're trading with caution, you're being responsible, and you're making the best decisions for your future. Your future, okay? So that's the disclaimer. So a break of 1369, a retest of this level and a potential continuation down looks um, pretty nice. Let's go down to the Audi time frame and see if we have any retracements levels here. Because this is such a strong level in the market, if we react um, and we've had some very aggressive um, reactions from this level, I think I'm more interested in seeing this as a buy zone if we don't break it, more so than a pullback resistance continuation. But I'm going to lay out a, a map for you for those cells because I feel like if we're now starting to close deeper into this level and not reacting so aggressively, then there must be a depletion of that buyer sentiment. So the next reaction, if we don't deplete this on a daily, could just be a simple pullback before the continuation bearish. So with that being in mind, what I want to do is take this information here, which is a uh, structural low in this current downtrend. And I'm going to go down to the, what I want to go down to the 30 minute time frame to look for a retest level in the market. Now we have a retest level that is much lower than anticipated here because of the wicks that were formed. So we will not adjust this now that we're on the 30 minute time frame. We're going to keep this here and we're going to work with this level as our reaction level. So the rule of thumb is this, in my case, is if we don't react to this level aggressively <clears throat> and the daily candle doesn't leave a strong wick rejection, the idea is that the bears are in control and there's a high chance that we continue bearish tomorrow. So the pullback is not going to be a pullback rejection. It's just going to be a pullback to create a retest slash lower high continuation. So what I'm looking for here is a reaction at this level here at 1396 for a continuation bearish, giving us a range from this structural high down to this low of 24 pips. Bit small. Make sure you use this as a management level, but that is what I'm looking for. And then if price doesn't come back for whatever reason, then I'm looking for a break of 1369 for a retest and a continuation bearish. I don't think we need to scale down any lower because I think this is the level that we're going to be working with. If we start breaking above 1396 and we start continuing bullish, then there is a chance that the sentiment may change and or we continue to respect this uh, consolidation and we find ourselves moving higher. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm just giving you the idea of what I think is going to happen based on what I'm seeing in front of me. So that's the analysis on GU. The next pair that we'll take a look at is GJ. Now, what's in store for GJ moving tomorrow? Well, look, guys, we have a strong bullish candle today that has depleted its whole move, flipped, turned bearish, and now is continuing bearish. Are we seeing a weak pound? Maybe. I mean, looking at GU, it looks like that. And that is a very good sign for our GU idea. We're going to take the structural low. Now, I really don't like this because I can see the gap down and correction on this move. So I don't know if this is the level. I, no, I don't like it at all. What I'm going to work with here is this because this is the strongest reaction level. Okay. We see multiple wick rejections here to the left. And then if we bring this over, we can see price reacting here. So we didn't close below and we see price reacting here. Then we had the gap down. And then this is where price reacted to continue bullish. 
And the only thing that I can think about is this reaction here. So this is my structural low. So let's mark this in as being a reaction level. What do we want to see from GJ moving into the Asian session? We want to see the daily candle create that top wick. And by the time we wake up to trade pre-London, we want to see that daily candle bearish below today's candle. We're not worried about this, but below today's candle. So now that we've got that in, let's go down to the four hour and try and mark our structural high here. We have a really nice intraday trend, which is really good for the analysis. The idea that GJ is going to continue bearish. We've got a level in the market here where we can see that price will react from at 163.33. So the only plan of action that I'm looking for only is to see price breaking the structural low and looking for that retest. Now that we're on the four hourly, I'm also going to move this to the level or area where price is reacting to. So this will be significant enough. Now with that, I need to see price breaking this level for a continuation bearish. Okay. Monitor GU, monitor G uh, GJ, watch EU, see if we get USD strength, look at AU, whatever it is that you're looking at, New Zealand dollar USD. See if we get this break below 163.14 and let's look for that continuation. Any pullbacks, I'm not interested. Now you might say, should we look for buys off at this level? Well, I mean, you can. This is a 4H level and I'll show you something right now, um, which is if we isolate the candle, where the reaction is going from, and you scale down low enough to a lower time frame, you will now start to see from a five minute perspective, a brick wall break. We have the first shift above the brick wall, a higher low into a really nice retest level in this market. If we isolate this area here and scale down to the one minute time frame, you will now start to see the intraday trend, which is higher highs and higher lows a deep pullback into the last higher low and previously respected um, key level in the market. And once you start to see the shift in the market, which is the break above the structure, which is the first shift in a long time where we break above the highs, this is where you want to enter your trades. Bam. What is that? A four pip stop loss? Damn, I ain't seen that in a long time. Four pip stop loss. Wow. And there you go, my friends. Risk a thousand, make a thousand. Wait, risk a thousand, make three thousand. Simple, beautiful price action. It's like making pasta. Just absolutely gorgeous. Wow. Now, how can we uh, anticipate this move? Well, it's simple. We have price pushing into a major rejection area in the market. You can see here we have a shift. Oh, sorry. You can see here we have a shift in the structure. So a brick will break. Scaling uh, brick will break. Identifying the wick projection where price is reacting from. So this becomes a key level before this even pans out. Then you go down to the one minute time frame. You see the structural change. Higher highs, higher lows. We have a higher low here, which didn't make the high. So it's not, not a higher low, but it's not validated just yet. So we're looking for a deep pull back into a key level. Price is failing to break, price failing to break, price failing to break. Area where price is failing to break above the new shift in momentum, which is a bullish shift in momentum, breaking above this level. Bulls are in control. And then you're looking for a continuation to the upside. Gorgeous. This is absolutely magnificent. Okay. So that's that. Let's get back on track here because we're kind of digressing. So 4H time frame. let's take a look at what we're looking at here. So 4H time frame, we want to see a close below this level. If we're going to continue bearish, we want to see a close below this level. Now we are two hours and 10 minutes before the daily candle. We could get a reaction. I'm not worried about what GJ is doing. I'm, we will check that. Oh, you should check that tomorrow. But if we get that break close below in line with what we're seeing at this moment in time, then we continue bearish. If we don't break below this level, guys, we're not continuing bearish until we do. So you will now need to start looking for structural changes on your higher time frame, preferably your hourlies and your 30 minutes to look for this kind of behavior. This bearish depletion, the failure to break the structural lows, the new shift, which is this reaction from the 4H, the higher low forming, then the continuation. If you're going to take buys off of this level, 
this is the pattern you want to be looking for. For sales, I'm looking for 163.14 and that's it. I'm moving on. The next pair that we'll take a look at is uh, gold. Now, let's take a look at this from a daily time frame. Now, gold is failing to break these lows. This is pretty clear. Oh, Lord, we are in a big old consolidation as well by the looks of it. Anyway, let's mark our structural high and our structural low just to get some clarity on where the market is at. I know we're in a downtrend, but if you see GU, we're failing to break a major low that we haven't broken in a long time. If you look at gold, we're failing to break a major low that we haven't broken in a long time. This might be a telling story that we may not break tomorrow. So that is sometimes why it's very important we wait for that break to happen. Now, you can see all the wick rejections here at 1664. Look, guys, if GU doesn't break, gold's not going to break. If gold don't break, GU shouldn't break in theory based on USD strength. So if we keep rejecting this again, um, then, boy, you know... I guess we're going to continue bullish um, with this structure, or we're potentially going to continue in the range. Let me correct that. Back to the upside. Um, I'd rather not give you analysis on gold because of the difficulty of the structure to trade. I don't want to call out buys, even though I may take buys tomorrow from this level, because the overall sentiment is illustrating USD strength, which in theory means you should be taking sales. So unless you know what you're looking for, it's probably wise to stay out of this until you have a major break or a major reaction, and I'm talking about a 4H reaction off this level for buys and or 4H break for sales. So look, I, I don't want to confuse anybody that's new to the channel or new to trading or looking for something concrete. My bias is either or on this one, and I'm just going to leave it at that because it is gold. Okay, sorry for the gold traders out there. I'm, I'm sorry, but I don't want to confuse the majority. I will say this, though, if we get a 4H uh, bullish close above this level, I will be looking for buys. If we break below this level, then it's a no-brainer. I'm looking for sales, okay? So that's my analysis on gold. Analysis on gold. Let's take a look at USDJPY here. Now, on USDJPY, you can clearly see, again, we're ranging. Um, we have a strong dollar. We have a strong yen. <laughs> we have a strong dollar. We have strong yen. And for that reason, I'm not trading this. And, I've, and I told you this last week. Any of you that ch trade UJ... When I follow my content religiously, I said, do not trade UJ because of the conflict between two strong currencies and two strong currencies create a range. And as you can see here, we have a range. I told you so, right? Look, we're still ranging. So I'm staying away from this one. Let it go. Wow. I mean, look, guys, I think I think my analysis is going to be pretty simple this week. Or at least today. And that's good because my throat's hurting me. So... Here we go. There's your range. Anybody trading UJ? And you know why we're not trading it? That's the exact reason why we're not going to analyze EJ. And Euro's been a bit trashy the last week or so, hasn't it? Last week, we were here, there, and everywhere with it. And anytime we made an analysis, like one day it would move, the next day it would just do nothing. So that's on the back burner. Hopefully, Euro USD is like this. Yeah, I mean, it's not. And um, this is just supporting our um, idea of USD strength. So you can see we broke out this consolidation, right? On Euro USD, and we've broken back in. And on the break back in, look how we're respecting this. Okay. Now you might be like, oh, Rox, you just adjusted that. Well, there's no rules where you put it. Okay. Some people say put it on the wick, uh, body to wicks, which I did in the past. Some people might say, whatever. I'm just saying it's an area in the market and I see the reaction. I've got to make sense of it. So I put the pieces of the puzzle together like a CSI agent. And I understand that this is common sense. So that's what I've done. Now, USD, if you are strong, my friend, we need you to break this low. From a daily perspective, you haven't. So we need you to break this low. So my analysis is this. If USD is strong, USD should break this low. If USD is not going to continue to be strong, then we don't break this low. Then we end up in the same position as Euro Yen and USD JPY. And uh, to be honest with you, it's not something I'm going to trade. So anybody out there that's looking to trade this, um, I'm giving you higher time frame and, and analysis here. Last week, I was able to give you some really spot on intraday time frame analysis and key levels. And we done extremely well last week. But if it's not clear to me, then I'm not going to try to make it clear for you. And I will say that this is what I'm waiting for. Even though this is a daily, I I'm cool with that. Let the daily start breaking through. Even while the candle's open, I can still look for those trades from an interstate perspective and just jump on that train bearish and ride it down if that's what it's going to do. So this is my idea 
on EURUSD. Next pair we'll take a look at is USD CAD and damn, this pair just keeps going up. Now CAD is getting shredded. And um, guys, if you've been following again from last week, we've been screaming USD strength. So if you haven't been able to take advantage of all the pairs that you should be trading based on currency strength and the sentiment of the market, you are slacking on your macking, man. You, you need a different approach to the market or you need a different mindset because this is just too simple. We said last week, don't trade USD JPY. We said last week, be careful of Euro. So don't trade Euro Yen or Euro USD. We said that we identified USD strength. So look for um, sells or buys on USD. We called out buyers on USD CAD. And we said, look for buyers and sells on GJ, um, GU and gold. So again, anybody trading all these exotic pairs, Aussie dollar CAD, USD Swiss franc, Swiss franc yen, if that even exists pound swiss franc like move away from them you don't have to be experienced to trade these other pairs don't let people fool you in believing that there's advanced pairs and other pairs because if these currencies didn't have symbols or names they would just be candles on the chart with the same duration in terms of time frames don't let that be a mental block to you that you can't trade gj or gu or gold because it's too scary no it's not what you risk in your trade is what you're prepared to lose. So it makes zero difference. Yes, there's more volatility. Yes, there's more volume. But embrace it because that's what you want as a trader. You're not here to sit around and just watch the markets move like a snail. Do you understand? You're not here trying to, I don't know, watch paint dry. You want to see the damn market move. You want to see volatility. You want to see volume. You want to see the candles moving fast. Get in the right trade and the candles move fast in your direction. How about that? You know? So think about it. If you're still trading these wacky pairs, then psh, that's probably where why you're losing money. And uh, I, I hope that money's trickling over into these other markets because, boy, oh, boy, like, it's just easy money for those that know how to trade. And it's easy money for those that know the pairs that they should be trading. Anyway, I don't wish you anything. I don't wish anything bad on you. I want you to succeed. I want you to do well. But this is like a loving conversation between me and you as like brother to brother, sister, brother to sister, brother to sister. OK, I'm kind of saying, guys, wake up, smoke the coffee, trade the right pairs. Anyway, that being said, I like USD CAD, but I don't like USD CAD and I don't like USD CAD because we have the strong push phase without an exhaustion. So now if I know that in the back of my head, it's kind of going to throw me off just a tiny incy wincy little bit. And I'm going to think him pull back, pull back, pull back continuation. So what I would do is I'm only going to work with this from an intraday perspective for a pullback immediate con uh, uh, continuation. So we break above this high for the first time in a while. This is all I'm looking for. If we break deeper, that's fine. Because remember, there's still levels we can work with as a deep pullback, which is this here. If we do, that means that we're going to have a sentiment change at least for a whole day. So I probably won't trade tomorrow if that happens. Um, because I will just wait for the correction until either this low is broken or the markets continue with that USD strength sentiment. Okay, so 33.29 is where I'm looking for my retest continuation buys. That is it. Simple Simon says, wait for the retest back to 33. Why does that number change? 33, 31. I look for that retest continuation. That's it. Moving on, we're looking at Aussie dollar USD. What is happening? USD strength again. Okie dokie. Again, this is similar to the structures on uh, GU. We're looking for that major low break. Let's just check that. Yeah, major low break. We're looking for EU. Yeah, for that major low break. Gold, we're looking for that major low break. Uh, and Aussie dollar USD, we're looking for that major low break. If we have this major low break, right, what I'm thinking is that whoever is trading consistently and profitably, there is, I'm going to use a 4H here, there is a very high chance that you are in for a very good September, October, uh, September, October, and November, because usually when we get these major low breaks that we haven't broken in a long time, guys, there's a chance we're going to free, free, free fall, Brexit style. Ping! Straight to the downside. So fingers crossed we get this break at some point because we can make some serious, serious dollar. Anyway, we're starting from the 4H because we can see the wick rejections. We know we're not breaking this low. 
you already identify these structures, guys. If you are taking mental pictures of the process that we're talking about, you know, GU, gold, EU are all very similar. So what we're looking for here is this break below this level, retest, and then a continuation. Now, I'm not no analyst here, and I, and I don't do all this sociology, economic stuff, and, you know, try to decipher what is going to happen in the world that is going to be the reason we break this low for the first time in a long time. I couldn't give two bothers about it. All I care about is, is if it happens, then fantastic. And if it doesn't, it doesn't, you know. I'm not opposed to taking buys and sells from any key level, you know. So <clears throat> another beautiful buying opportunity here, by the way. I'm not going to decipher this one, but it, this is just, I can already see it, an absolutely gorgeous uh, level in the market to buy from. So if we break this tomorrow, great. We look for buys. If we don't, we don't. If the whole market shifts from the lows, looking at GU, EU and gold, and we start shifting back to the upside, even GJ, to be honest with you, then I'm going to look for short-term buys. I'm not looking for no retests on this. Uh, if we get a sharp reaction, then it's a consolidation. It's that simple. You buy from the lows, you sell from the highs, and that is it until you get a break of either or. So that's my analysis there. And I just want to say this for the record, right? You might be like, Rox, come on, man. Give me some concrete analysis, analysis here. You know, tell me where the market's going. <sighs> Last week, it was easy. This week is not hard. You just don't trade if you don't have a directional bias. But it definitely, in terms of structure, is not as easy as it was last week. Okay? So how you make sense of that is this. If it's easy, you trade and you keep trading, you keep trading, you make and make more money, right? Last week was my best week this year. Now, if it's like this, you play on the side of caution and you wait for concrete evidence of where the market's going. And um, you either wait for clear directional breaks and structure to form, or you play the um the, the, the kind of story that the market tells us if we're not breaking the lows you take the buys and if you're not breaking the highs you take the sells okay that is it and when i say that i'm not talking about reversal trading here by any means i'm talking about looking at structural changes shifts in the market so i just give you an example already previously i want to see this downtrend break let's draw it in for those that are a bit skeptical i want to see this downtrend break create that brick wall break I want to see that higher low, a continuation, double bottom, continuation, or break out of the high, retest, continuation. There's basically my strategy summed up in black lines. Okay. So that's my analysis on Aussie dollar USD. Looking at USD Swiss franc, yeah, I think you can just keep that that cross on you for some reason. Uh it, it was just always meant to be. You was never meant to be cleared and using the dollar USD. USD strength here again, pretty simple to trade, guys. So let's look at this. Oh, boy. You know something? Let me see something here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, well, I don't know. Guys, look, uh, I'm I'm very hopeful of USD continuing being strong. Unless there's only CPI news or anything coming up um, this week or tomorrow that could shift this market. But I, I'm very confident that we're going to continue to see this USD strength, if not tomorrow, um, Thursday. And moving forward into next week and the rest of September. But let's see what happens. Um, we have this break at this major low here, which is very interesting. Something you should have been looking out for today. Scaling down to the four hourly time frame, you can see this beautiful break and retest. I didn't even know it was there. You just know that that's what you're looking for, right? This beautiful break and retest. Um, this is the major low that we break as a retest level. 4H, we're changing the level. So simple price action here is a beautiful retest and continuation bearish that is all i'm looking for and uh that that is it i can work with some levels here i can see uh i'm not going to call them out i mean daily close wick form continuation of usd is strong how did the daily start out today the daily started out like this so this is the i don't know what i'm talking about the daily actually did create a top wick so let's find out where this top wick is so this top wick is on the 20th of september so 20 September, we start from this point here. Right, here we go, 20 September. Boom. So we literally just opened, pushed up, and just violently rejected. All right, I'm going to give you an intraday level then because of that reaction in anticipation of a continuation of that tomorrow. 
and we're going to use this hourly time frame. So there's two levels we can work with from a higher time frame perspective, 5941. And then from an hourly perspective, um, we can look for this as a continuation if we get this kind of same reaction tomorrow, uh, where the daily opens, creates that top wick and says, uh uh, I ain't pushing bullish anymore, baby. I'm going down. Okay. So that's that. Uh uh, I ain't pushing bullish anymore. I'm going down level 5913. And if we start pushing above, then we're looking for this. Let's move this to the middle here. Not that it matters. 5936 area. All right. So that's my analysis for this week. Pretty plain and simple. I've got my ideas and I've got my eyes on USD and yen strength for the rest of this week. Uh, more specifically, USD. I'm not opposed to GJ as well. I really like the, the look of GJ. Gold, I'm a bit skeptical about because we haven't broken the majors. U GU, I'm not a bit skeptical about because we haven't broken the majors. Euro, Euro, Euro USD, we haven't broken the majors. Um, and it, it will be very significant to break those majors to see that continuation of that USD strength on those pairs specifically. We may get some pullbacks into some intraday levels and we may get some rejections because of the consolidations and we go back up. I don't know, but we'll see what happens. I've given you my thoughts and my ideas. Again, this is of my own opinion, so these are not facts. These can go the totally opposite way or they could totally leave without you. I just don't know. Trade with caution. Be responsible with your trading, guys. Make your own decisions. Look for the signals that you're looking for per your strategy and approach to the markets. And of course, I wish you nothing but the best moving into tomorrow. So we'll be back this week. Um, I wasn't here yesterday because of the Queen's Memorial. So just out of respect for that situation. And just so that I was being respectful to you guys, uh, I didn't post. Yeah, basically, I'm saying I just chilled out, actually, which I didn't. I woke up at 4 a.m. yesterday and I was working all the way till 9 p.m. Um, that evening, working on a very, very important project, personal project. And um, I was grafting, slept for about three hours and grafted for all that time. You can do the maths. Anyway, point being, guys, we're back. We'll be posting regularly. I hope you enjoyed the video. And of course, if you did, please, please smash that like button for me. Turn on notifications. So when I post next, you know about it. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. And uh, as I always say, continue to trust the process.